Well, Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel is no stranger to very aggressive politics, so it really meant something when he recently told Democrats that simply hating Trump won't be enough to reclaim power. They need a winning message, too. Watch. I think we don't talk about and fight for the middle class like we are. We believe we're for them. And I think there are certain things that we as a party wandered off from as it relates to being a party that fought for hardworking families. I think we come off and can't come off as a party disdainful of them. Democrats, the party of the working man, the party of the New Deal getting called out as unlikable snobs? We truly live in an odd world, and nobody knows it better than former Virginia Senator Jim Webb. He ran for the Democratic presidential nomination just last cycle, and he's repeatedly castigated Democrats for abandoning their historic base. Senator Webb joins us tonight. Senator, thanks a lot for coming on. How are you? Can you... I'm, I'm great. I'm just thinking, I remember the day that you were nominated by Virginia Democrats, and you're you know, fairly progressive on the economic questions, more conservative on the cultural questions, pro-Second Amendment. Um, can you imagine someone with those views getting the nomination in Virginia today? Well, I can't speak for Virginia, but I can speak for where the National Democratic Party has gone over, over the last several years. And, and what I was saying previous to the uh, presidential election and what I was trying to put into uh, a plank, a platform when I was running for president is pretty similar to what uh, uh, Mayor Emanuel just said today. I mean, there's no surprise to, to anyone in that respect. And I, I think what's happened here, if, if, if I may, is that we have a situation where the, the Democratic Party has moved very far to the left during the Obama years, and we, it, it, they can thank themselves in many ways for the election of Donald Trump, and there's a, sort of a denial uh, inside the Democratic Party that this is so. They bet on demographics, and I don't think the demographics that they bet on, frankly, are going to stay uh, the, the way that they thought they were going to stay. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, President Trump has two serious challenges here, and he, I hope uh, people in the, in the White House will, will uh, come to grips with it. The first is the manner in which he is conducting the presidency itself. You know, you, you, when you're the president of right. the United States, you're a steward for all of the people, and it's uh, quite a transition from being a business person. Uh, by the way, for anyone out there who is wondering how to conduct yourselves in public office, don't ever have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone uh, who you believe is going to become your adversary, unless you are taping it. You know, we had a rule of threes the whole time I was in government. You know, I want three people in that room if we're going to have disagreements and right. we're going to write our own memorandum of the record. And the other thing is, this is an administration that Very has smart. not populated its appointees. Uh, you know, we're, we're well into the administration. The best administration in my lifetime, my professional uh, lifetime, was the Reagan administration. They brought in highly competent personnel people from the outside world, and they, they cleared their people, and they got them uh, confirmed. And we don't see that. We, we barely see a cabinet in the Trump administration right now. And how are you going to get your message out when you've got people in these uh, sub-cabinet sub positions who really aren't demonstrating the message and the loyalty? That is true. Democrats are, are obstructing it. Republicans in the House and Senate aren't helping much. So really quickly, I thought, and I, you and I have talked about this, that after Trump won unexpectedly, there'd be a period of soul-searching where party leaders on both sides thought through how did this happen and how do we change our message in order to win these voters back to us. Why hasn't that happened? Well, w one would hope that that is happening, but I really don't see it in what the, 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 the this isn't a, you know, anti-Democrat, Democrat talk, and I just don't see the Democrats coming to grips with, with the reality. They're still betting on the long-term demographics of the country, that, that where the, uh, the demographic groups have, have changed for a lot of reasons, beginning with the uh, 1965 immigration reform bill. So they're wrong on that. And, the, and they're pushing toward the 18, and so the, the target then is the president rather than the message of the, the two parties. They, they both, right. both sides need to, to become uh, more positive about how to get agendas through, and the Trump administration has got to populate its people, and with all due respect to the president of, of the United States, he, he really needs to tighten uh, the way that he is communicating in his meetings and in these suites. Yeah, I think that's wise advice. He'd be smart to listen to you. Senator Webb, thanks a lot. Thank you.